Amen. Just a few technical difficulties. Let's give God praise. In this place, we serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a magnificent God. How many of you know that God is so consistent? If you put all your trust in him, you will not fail. He's consistent. Guess what? He's not like us. Y'all know how we are. We'll like you today. Maybe like you tomorrow. But by Friday, mm, she get on my nerves. I can't deal. Guess what? We get on his nerves. But he still loves us. He's still just. He's still faithful. And he allowed each and every one of us to get up this morning. He allowed us to breathe in air to walk and to do whatever we needed to do today. And so what I determine in my mind every morning, I, you know, I get up, I do my devotions, I think of the first thing I go is, thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus, thank you, my God. Whatever is in my spirit, I just wake up with gratefulness. But then I set in my mind to say, you know what, he's giving you another chance. Get it right today, girl. Get it right today. Worship him in the beauty of holiness worship him because he is God not for just what he's done but because he is God and then I also do this other thing Lord if you don't do another thing you're still God you're still Abba my father you're still El Shaddai God Almighty and whatever you want to do is what you will do let's give him praise in this place he's worthy do you love him do you love him? So I'm going to give you one more chance. Let's lift up this roof with praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. He's a worthy God. And you may be seated in the presence of God, our Father. Do y'all understand how blessed we are? We are not running from bombs. We're not trying to figure out, are we going to eat today, tomorrow, or hopefully sometime this week, maybe we can get a breadcrumb, because you do know that there are people right now going through that, trying to figure out where they can get water from and where they can get food from. And we complain and get mad at God with our bougie, arrogant taking for granted the life that we live let's give them praise again amen so welcome everyone i am always so happy to see you all welcome to those who are on our social media platforms we're grateful because we know all of you could be anywhere but you're here at prince of peace praise center and i thank god for that so for your announcements we have, um, we're getting ready to go into our summer break for a year in the Bible. So we will be, a year in the Bible will be for the rest of May. Then we will have a summer, summer break from June until August, and we'll start back in September. For those who have come and come at least eight weeks, does not have to be consecutively, just those who have come for any eight weeks, and you notice the honor system, I'm not going to sit there and go, no, I don't remember seeing you here. Uh-uh, you weren't there. It's the honor system. But if you know that you have been here for eight weeks of a year in the Bible, please make sure that you sign up in the back, put your name and the information that it asks for, because we will have a graduation. Um, and that's an important part because you guys, you pressed out, you came, and you those who know me know I have a passion for the word. That is something that's in me. You know, stuff that y'all be like, why is she crying over that? It's a passion. When you know when you have a passion for something, it moves you when maybe some other people might not be moved. I have a passion for the word of God. And just the fact that you come out and I watch the growth of the people, stuff that they weren't even saying before they're saying and they're knowing. And y'all understand that the word is God and the God is word. And God is word. Do you understand that? So when you come out, you're coming out to be in relationship and to deepen your relationship 
with him. And so that's a major, major thing. And so I thank you all. And I thank you all who come to Word Wednesday every single week as well. But for our graduation for a year in the Bible, we're going to do that graduation because it came out an hour early for almost a year. Actually, it was more than a year. We went actually longer than a year. So those, make sure if you've been here eight times, please make sure you sign up. And then we'll do a graduation. And then we'll begin again in September. Also, Spaghetti Thursday is tomorrow. Y'all know that is our thing. We all went out on as a church to say we would do Spaghetti Thursday to feed people every second Thursday of the month. And we have been doing that thing. We have been doing an awesome job. I'm so proud of y'all because when you said you were going to do it, when you committed to it, you held tight to it. Some of you haven't even missed a time. And I am so grateful for you all, all who have come out and said, hey, I'm going to take off. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That is a tiring thing. It makes us tired. I couldn't believe it was time again. And I'm always like this, is that time again? But then when I do it, I am energized all over again. Amen. So I want to thank all of you, but we need your help. And I want to thank um, the leaders, Sister uh, Sherry, who is uh, Minister Sherry, who is the leader of the outreach ministry. And then Sister Kelly and Elder Lee, who also helped with that moment. They have been doing an outstanding job. And you know, the thing is, yes, let's give them a hand. Now give yourselves a hand because as a church, you've committed to making sure that this is a moment and y'all know that people have come to us and say that's the only time they get to eat and when they say that you know you might be like "Uh uh-huh right no they have told us stories about they were trying to figure out and somebody even told us about them stealing and we've had some of that because the people hadn't had no food we've had them to take from us because they hadn't had food so do you understand that a church that changes people's lives, that means you're on the right mission. You're on the mission that God intended. So we are impacting lives. So we thank you all. So make sure that if you can, please come out tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. That will be at uh, Live Oak Drive, the warehouse. I think it's 907. 907 Live Oak Drive. Okay, that's at the Operation Blessing Center. Then also, we need you back here at 1230. If you can get here before 1230, before they come to help us just set up and get ready, before they come back with the food, that would be great. And then again at 430. We need you all. We can't do this alone. We do this as a church. We're a church strong. So we need all of you. Also, women's meeting. Women, y'all know that we have to get ready for our conference. So I do need all the women that I can get. That's every woman. Every woman is a part of the uh, women's meeting. So every woman, women, every woman, please show up on Saturday, May 8th at 10 a.m. We're not going to keep you but, but two hours, but we have to make that a power-packed moment. So please make sure you do whatever you can to be there on Saturday, May 18th. As well, I need to meet with really quick, like two minutes, Minister Sherry and uh, uh, Trustee Porter, just real quick, right after, um, right after service. Also, our late night kickback, really quick, late night kickback. That is going to be on, what is that, May 31st from 7.30 to 10.30. Y'all help us get the word out. They're going to have a ball. That is going to be the thing, all right? That late night kickback. They are going to be live. So that's from ages 18 years old to 30 years old. And you see they can showcase their talent, but they don't have to showcase their talent. They want to come and just have a great kickback and chill and do all the things that they're going to do. We're also going to have a session where we hear from the people, okay, where we hear from our young adults and see where they are. So Bishop and I will be talking just for a little while. The rest of it, y'all going to have a ball. Amen. And then this is our Giving Word Wednesday. Thank you so much for your continual giving, as we always say. We appreciate you. Tonight is Word Wednesday, and y'all know we always give a Word Wednesday seed. And year in the Bible today, we were talking about King Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem. And that's the first time you saw a tithe. And um, when Abraham won the battle, he, he said, I have to pay, I have to give back to God. So that's the first time you heard about the tithe in the Bible. And so he went and he gave his tithe. And that's why we say, when you come into the house of the Lord, he said, I'm not going to get all I get from God. 
and not give God something. That's what the sacrifices were. That's why they did sacrifices at the temple and at the tabernacle because they would never go to worship without bringing something to God. So with that being said, tonight is our Word Wednesday seed. Or if you want to pay your tithes and offering, you guys know because you are a mature church and you do an awesome job all week long. But if you would like to pay your tithes, your offering, or your Word Wednesday seed, you can pay online at www.princeofpeacepc.org, cash app, dollar sign, P-O-P-P-C-1. You can give by Square at our kiosk in the back, or you can give by Givelify. Um, you find giving cards in the back of some of the uh, chairs on your row. As well, you can give by envelope by raising your hand and ask for um, an envelope if you want to give by cash or check. All right, thank you so much. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you, God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the uh, opportunity just to hear from you. We love you. We honor you. We ask that you bless our bishop like never before, God. We bind every distraction, anything that would get him off. Give him power, God. Endow him with just the power to speak the word of God. Lord, we love you and we ask for strength for him. And I ask God that you bless the people of God, that they will hear every word, that they will eat on the words. And not just hear the words. It is in your precious and glorious name we do pray. And all of God's people say amen. Amen. Let's welcome our very own Bishop, Bishop Reginald D. Smith. God for all of the men at our Man Up Monday. Man, we had a lot of men and we had some uh, other men from other church churches. So we just want to thank God for what God is doing. It's, this is going to be real good tonight. Not going to be long. Not going to be, it's just a word from the Lord. Um, you can tell when, when you're doing God's work because everything began to fall in place for you. I want to teach y'all tonight because I heard a preacher say yesterday, I think, that, um, what did he say? He said something to this aspect of when somebody is doing something different that's against God, you don't, you don't have to change what you're doing. You keep doing what you're doing, all right? I want you to keep doing what you're doing. All right, so I'm going to read this, and we're just going to walk through it, take my time, and... and and for you to learn tonight. So, in Second Sam, this is one of my famous uh, favorite books. Um, I'm, I'm glad that um, it's in, in the Bible. It says, "Now David, Second Second Samuel six, one through ten, um, David brought three um, thirty thousand of Israel's best soldiers and led them to Bala and Judah, which was also called." Uh, Corinthian, Jerome, um, they were going there to get, we're going to slow walk it, they was going to get the sacred chest and to bring it back to Jerusalem. That's my art down there. The throne of the Lord, all power is above, the winged creatures on top of the chest, and he is worshipped there. Uh, um, they put the sacred chest on a new ox cart and started bringing it down the hill from Abinadad's house. Abinadad's sons, Uzza and Ahio, were guiding the ox cart. All right. um, 
four with Ohio, um, verse four, walking, I mean, with Ohio, walking in front of it. Some of the people of Israel that was playing music on small harps and other string instruments and on tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It says, David and the others were happy and they danced for the Lord with all their might. But when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, the oxen stumbled. All right. And so Azza reached out and, and took a hold of the sacred chest. So can y'all tell me the only ones who are really supposed to touch the ark? What's the name? The Levites. All right? So Uzzah wasn't a Levite. And the ark began to shift. And he thought that God needed his help. So he reached out and tried to balance God. And that's what we do. We think God need our help. We always put our two cents in it and try to balance God. We try to tell God this is what way we need to do it. But I but I have learned now in my walk that whatever goes on is working for me and my wife good now. It, and it looks like it might not be working. Even when it looks bad on that's why you can't let somebody get in your ear and say, I wouldn't have took that. You take it. Because this battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. So he reached out to grab the ark and the chest. And he says he took a hold of the sacred chest. The Lord God was very angry with us for doing this. And he killed him immediately beside the chest. And David got angry with God for killing us. He named that place bursting out against us. And that's what it's still called. David was afraid of the Lord and thought, should I really take this chest to my city? He decided not to take it there. Instead, this is what I'm, this is what I'm gonna teach tonight. He turned off the road and took it to the home of Obed Edom who was from Gath, right? And so I want to teach you tonight on a position in yourself for God's blessing. Right? Father, we thank you for this word. I ask for teaching power. We're giving them a receiving ear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so I, I, this is not where I'm going to pinpoint, but we, we're talking about position. Somebody say position yourself. And so often in our walk with Christ, we, God want to bless us, but we, we stay out of position. We, we, we stay unfocused. We, we, we stay unbalanced. And the Bible says that when the chest was unbalanced, that, that Uzzah put his hands up there and he died instantaneously because he felt like God needed his help. And, and so, but while he died, there was a man by the name of Obed-Edom. And Obed-Edom was a Levite, if you read about it. Now, he wasn't mad that he wasn't even taking the ark. He, he wasn't mad that he wa wasn't chosen to move to ark to David's hometown. So, But what he did is Obed-Edom was at his house, watch this, doing what he do. Let me just give you a little bit about it. So we learned that Obed-Edom was a God-fearing man and showed proper reverence for the ark, unlike Uzzah, who may have become familiar with it because the ark was in Uzzah's father's house for over 20-some years. And what happens is people get familiar with you. And what I always ask God to give me something different so you'll never know which way I'm coming. Can I get an amen? And so the Bible says that this man by the name of Obed-Edom was, 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 was home getting himself ready, doing, doing what God wanted him to do. And so out of nowhere, David said, 
let me take the Ark of the Covenant to Obed Edom House. And you're going to ask yourself tonight, would you have been prepared or in position for God to take, the, for David to take the Ark to your house? That, that's what, see, th this is deeper than deep. Because if, the, because if, if you're not prepared, there's a blessing that you might miss out, might, might be missing out on. And so Obed Edom was prepared for the ark to go to his house or to the home of David. And so even when you're not, when, when you're not the one called to lift the ark or the one who called or whatever, you got to make sure you're in position so when the blessing come, you will be able to receive it. And I have learned in my walk with Christ that a lot of people, they'll say stuff like, well, I don't ever get blessed. You know why you'll say that? Because you're never in position to get blessed. Because one thing about God, God don't bless no mess. Right? I'm, I'm trying to help you. And so, and so Obed Edom was home taking care of his family, worshiping God, doing the right thing. And God don't have to see you with the natural eye. For God says, I judge the heart. So out of nowhere, when you're doing the right thing, and it just seems like you're not going to get it, you must stay in position. Somebody say, I got to get in position. I gotta, and, and you keep getting around folk who are out of position, and that's why God won't send you the desires of your heart. Because he's a God that can do anything. He, he is a God that can do anything. And so why is it taking so long for God to give you what you've been praying for? That's good right there. Why is it taking so long? Because guess what? You might be at the crib out of position. <laughs> and so watch this. And so Obed Edom, he, he was a God-fearing man. Uh, um, and, and so despite knowing about, um, thank you, us of fate, Obed, Obed Edom welcomed the ark and seemed uh, to have no misgivings. Watch this. Indeed, as a godly man, Obed Edom uh, uh, had nothing to fear. See, he was, he, he was, he was, and, 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 and this is how it's going to happen because, because God is coming back like a thief in the night, and nobody knows the day nor the time. And so I'm going to take it from there to here that you must be in position for God to get you to take you back. All right? Somebody said you got to be in position. You got to be in position. And so watch this. And so in Proverbs 28 uh, and 1, it says, uh, the righteous are, are as bold as a lion. So when, when they was bringing that ark to Obed Edom house, he wasn't scared. Because, because let me take you back to the Old Testament. Because if they brought that ark to your house and you wasn't living holy, it, watch this, this is good. Everybody in your quill. Somebody say everybody. Children and everything would have died. On the flip side, let me give you the good side. The Bible says that Obed Edom, they kept the ark for 30, for three months, and everybody in the house was blessed. That, that's, that's, that's so good. Like, because I'm trying to walk with God, and everything in my house, I'm, I'm talking about my house, is blessed. Can you imagine being out of the will of God? You'll be struggling with your bills, your money, your jobs, people. Am, am I helping you real quick? And so that's why you got to be in position even when nobody can see you. Somebody said, I got to be in position when nobody can see me. When nobody, be, be, because this is bigger than us. This thing is generational. Somebody says it's generational. This thing is generational. This thing is bigger than us. And so we have to learn how, I'm going to teach you tonight, how to position yourself. Because you never know when God want to stop by and bless you. You never know. You never know when God want to stop. And, and, and that's why God keep passing your, everybody on your road getting blessed but you. 
because you're the only one out of position. Am, am I helping you real quick? God can do it if you allow God to do it. But you must be what? You must be in position. A, a, a quarterback and a lineman is in the same game and on the same field. Right or wrong? But a lineman have to get down to a three-point stance. And a quarterback have to stand up so he can see. Now watch this. Same game, same team. If you win, we win. But it's a different position. You trying to play quarterback when you're the center. And you're trying to be the center when you're the quarterback. All right? And so we have to learn our position with God. We have, to, we have to learn that whatever position God puts you in, you have to be the best that you can. Because watch this. This is good. This is a team sport. Let me say it again. This is a team sport. So when one don't want to play the game good, you might make the entire team. You might make the entire team lose. And so you got to understand that, that the, Bible, the Bible says that we are many different pieces, but, but we are one body. And so you got to make sure that the thumb is lining up with the big toe. You got you to make sure you're in position. You can't be all over the place because one, one, one bad move, we all might lose, right or wrong. One thing you're going to find out that I don't deal with is people who stay out of position. I, because this is not no, I like you, you like me. This is life or death. This is heaven or hell. Amen. That's why in church, you got to get out your little feelings. This is what happened. We, we come to church, we get saved, and we try to bring our same mentality from the streets into church. Then when you get disciplined, your little feelings get hurt. Now you're mad and you're ready to leave. Because you don't watch this. You don't want to reposition yourself. So you're trying to stay in the same position that you was in the streets. Now, that, that's why you keep talking to the same people. Because you still playing that stupid position. Some, some, some things you got to reposition. And you, you're trying to figure out why, why is everything hard? Why, why everything got to be tough? So what if God wanted to bless you? But he can't. Because, you know, he's a God that really want to bless everybody. You, you, you're not getting blessed because you won't position yourself. You like that, Mr. Brown? Let me say it again. You won't get blessed... And God will put, God, watch this, this is good. God will put a block on your blessing and, 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 and make you position yourself. He'll put a lock on your stomach and says, I, I'm going to let them get to this place, but I'm, but I'm going I'm to block, I'm, I'm going to stop it right here because they, if they got to position themselves on their knees to pray, I'm, I'm going to make sure, I, I'm, I'm going to get the best out of them. Amen. And so suppose God want to bless you, but he can't because you're out of position. This is a question that I have asked and people have asked me so often. I know God is, good, is a good God and he want to give us good gifts. But what if something in our life is blocking our blessing? What, what's what's block? Because no person can block your blessing but you. Somebody say, can't nobody block it. No, I'm just, you know, I'm just, no, you just out of position. That's it. You, you, you running the water in and we want you to run the ball. You out of position. You, you out of position. And so, but, but, and so you're blocking your stuff because you're out of position. Because it takes more than now lay me down to sleep, bless the Lord my soul to keep. 
That that's 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 for the babies. So, but I was telling my wife today when I was studying that when you when you get in the word of God, the word of God will start positioning you. Somebody say it'll change me. It'll change me. People who don't change, they stay out of the word of God. They they become they become people finders. If if you like me and you like my conversation, I'm gonna continue to talk to you. Yeah. And 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 because I said this earlier, when because people don't do God, don't let them change you. Don't don't let them change your whole life because they're not doing God. You ain't gonna change me. Right or wrong. For the Bible tells me what do good and evil have in common? What the dark and lightness have in common? I ain't got no help in here, but you better get yourself in position because everything in your life is getting hard. But once you get yourself in position, doors will open on your behalf. When you get yourself in position, men are given to your bosom. Can I get an amen? When you're out of position, the devil will take everything you got. Things you depended on here, come and get it. Somebody said, you got to get in position. You got to get in position. He got to get in position. Because, because what the devil would do, if he can't get you, he'll use the closest thing to you. Because the thing to you is out of position, and you're not trying to help it get back in position. Ah, oh, let me say it again. I need to say it again. So you got to be very careful because you might be in position, but the thing you keep talking to all the time is out of position. Now everything in your circle is out of position. The old folks say, my Lord, my Lord. What if the enemy is stealing from us due to our ignorance of the word of God? He, because your blessing is, is at your hand, and you just got to figure out because nothing comes easy with God. It, it just comes with a promise. It, 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 it's, it's a promise that it's going to come. The, the old folks say it may not come when you want them, but they're always on time. And so the, 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 the enemy is stealing because of Hosea 4 and 6. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Why would you come to church every Sunday Get the word of God and go back and hang with them foolios. You come get the word every single Sunday and you, go on, you keep going, talk to them people who don't like God. Somebody said, you better position yourself back. That's my cousin. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's my buddy. Oh, okay. All right. You better get yourself back in position. I'm, I'm learning that. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta get around people that can encourage you and, 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 and take you to another level every now and then. All right, watch this. And so not being in position can block God's blessing in our lives. I mean, you, you got to be ready to hear the word of God. You can, see, all right, so if I got Vontae, right, and I tell Vontae, look, I got a million dollars for you tomorrow. I'm just using you, all right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow forget it Thursday. And he already told me he can't get off. I'm just using him. But some way, somehow, tomorrow, because he will reposition himself tomorrow to come get that million dollars. But, but, well, let me use Manuel. So, so he's going to come get that million dollars. But the fool thing doesn't mean too much. Oh, I'm gonna stop dead on the snake head. So well, it don't it don't it, it don't bring no spotlight. It don't it don't bring no preaching power. But not knowing that the fool bank is what's keeping this piece open. This is what's keeping this piece open. All right? God because God is honoring that. God, God, that's why me and my wife get up that bed after preaching and teaching. We still come here and go home tired. And we are high five each other. And we say, well, we got to church another month. You about, you about to hear me here. That, that, yeah, we go home tired. But we'll, we'll high five each other and say, yep, we got, we got them at least another month. 
And so you got to reposition yourself. You got to position yourself for things that don't bring light, that don't bring glory to you, but it brings glory to God. See, that, that, see feeding the people might not bring no glory to you, but it's going to bring glory to God but because he took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed a multitude of people, so God is in the feeding business. Can I get an amen? And so you got to position yourself for when, when, when folk don't think you're winning, but you really still winning because you have a good heart. And so one thing that can get you out of position, one thing that can get you out of position is your unbelief. Your unbelief can get you out of position. It can, it can, it, it can, make, it can make you turn the Bible says that the rich young ruler said, I don't do none of this stuff. I'm good. But when God told him, Jesus told him to sell everything, watch this, and follow me this way. You know what he said? Now, Jesus wanted him to go this way. You know what he did? He turned and went that way. I can't do it. So when he started walking that way, he was what? Out of position. Our decision-making, our belief, our unbelief, our unbelief can get us out of position. And, and, and being in position, storms are going to come, rain is going to come, people are, are going to dislike you. I have never seen so many grown people that fall by the wayside that can't take nothing. I, I love our church. We got the bangingest church there is. We'll tithe you out of tie water. But we got the cryingest church I ever seen in my life. You cry about everything. You can't handle nothing. Amen. I got to tell the truth because I got to know my sheep right or wrong. I don't know my flock. We are a church that will get out of order in a heartbeat. And I, I get slammed out of order. But we but we we a tithe. We, we are, we'll cook for you. We're going to have them people out there tomorrow. They're going to be out there tomorrow, and we're going to, this is the day, but we got the crying church there is. Somebody said, get that thing in position. Because we have a growing church, and when you have a growing church, people begin to cry a lot because they say to themselves, I hope I don't lose my God, my God, my God. You don't have no position. It's God's position. Tell your neighbor, it's God's position. It's God's position. I hope I don't lose my, somebody says God's position, all right? And so the Israelites, watch this, their unbelief caused, caused them to disobey the word of God because they were used to the Egyptian position. And, 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 and it, that's what's wrong with a lot of people now that become multimillionaires overnight. They, 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 they have changed their money status, but they never change their position. And you, you, you never change your position. And, and people, why this is so good, because people have had high positions in their life. It's hard for them to position themselves for God. You, you understand? It, it's hard for them to, to reposition, to get, to get in order with God. Because one thing I'm learning I don't care how much education, how much money, whatever you have, you can't outbeat God. Can I get an amen? And that's why you can't run behind people who got money. Because people who got money, they will make you their slave and they will be your God. You will never be my God. Because my God is God. Can I get an amen? All I got to do is bow down to my God. He'll give me exactly the desires of my heart. If I position myself right. And so the Israelites, they, they didn't even believe that Moses take us back. This thing is too hard. And God made a promise that, that they would not see the promised land. Because they would, watch this, they was, well, they was in the position to get blessed, but they didn't want to stay in position. Anybody ever been in the military? Raise your hand high. Okay, got a whole bunch. When you, the first thing they tell you is position, attention. Now, I done been in attention. 
so long. The other gentlemen was coming over to say, oh, my man, we are, we're going in the field this week. Now, I done been in a position of tension. 30 minutes, and my knees are bucked. And they tell you not to tighten up because you'll fall out. So then when you loosen up, they tell me, stay in this tension. I'm like, my God. But, but watch this. But, but when you stand at attention, you don't have to worry about everybody being out of order. And if you stand attention in the position of attention long enough, they're going to give you enough cadence. They're going to say, at ease. That means go ahead and rest a little bit. And so what God would do is if you stand attention long enough, he'll give you rest. He'll tell you, at ease. He'll, he'll say, you know what? You've been doing this long enough. I'm going to bless you. You ain't got to stand in attention long enough. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you rest because you stayed in the position of attention long enough. Some of us, the problem with us, I ain't talking about the church down the street today. I'm talking about this church, is we don't want to consume, assume the position of attention long enough because your attention span. And if you just stay long, if you could just come to Word Wednesday, come to Sunday school, come get you some prayer, come, if you, if you just do that position long enough, God will bless you. But you, you do this, oh man, I, I was already here Sunday, I can't come back Tuesday. I, I, I can't, I ain't no way I can get at 6 o'clock. But, but if I said I'm giving everybody a million dollars, you will figure out. You will tell that boss man. Take this job and because I'm going to get my meal right or wrong. See, you can stand at the position of attention for what you want. But God wants you to stand at position of attention so he can bless you. Right or wrong. He want to bless you. But you so busy, body. You won't stand. You, you won't stand. And God, God come to bless you today and you out. This is a true statement. I said to myself, we save our money now so y'all can forget this. So I said to myself, if they come to church today, I'm going to put a fire water in my pocket and I'm going to bless them like never before. I look around, they don't be here. I said, they can't stand in position. I'm attention long enough. I put $200 in my pocket. I said, man, welcome today. I'm going to give him that money. He came that Sunday, bam, take that money. See, you don't never know when God going to bless you. You, you have, but you got to be at the place to get blessed. You still hang around people going places where God is not going to put his ark. Places where God is not going to reside in. So you got, you got to get to the place where God going to bless you. You know there are some places that you go, some people you talk to that God ain't going. And when you do that, you're missing out what God is trying to do for you. I told my wife yesterday, I said, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to chill. I'm going to do my paperwork because I need to hear from God. I stay home yesterday, I chill. Stay home today and chill. Got, got, I've got this stuff tomorrow. We got meetings going on. We gotta, but, but, I, but when I'm resting, I, I rest. But when it's time to go to work, I got to stand in position. I got to be in the right position to receive in case somebody want to bless me. Suppose I ain't come to church. Edgar want to bless me with a grill. My bishop ain't even here. He ain't even, I can't even bless him. He sent me a text today. It'll be here to Monday. Guess why? I'm in position. I text him back. Okay, buddy. Thank you. But if I was out of order... All in the streets, I would have never seen the text. When Sherry gave me the truck and the trailer, I was in a meeting. She said, Bishop is back there in the back. Guess where I was at? At the church to receive the blessings of the Lord. You got to be at the place where God can take his covenant, his ark, and bless you. Can God come to your house? And bless you. Can God bless you? You got to figure that out. Can he bless you? Can he, can he do it? And so 
Somebody said I must be in the position of attention. I'm, I'm in the right position. And so I have learned about uh, positioning myself, so I must have belief. And, and the next thing I have to do to, to stay in position, this is what the enemy will use against you. He will try to have you walk in fear. If you walk in fear, you're out of position. You got you to you walk in faith. For God did not give you the spirit of fear, but a sound mind. He gave, you, he, he, he gave you a measure of faith, and it's up to you to grow it. He said, I'm giving everybody a measure of faith. And, and, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So can you imagine when you're out of position and not hearing? That's why people grow past you. You've been in church 20 years, they've been in church two years, and they have more faith than you. Don't ever judge nobody by how long they've been in church. Judge them by how much faith they have. I, I know he's seasoned. You can't even put him on no pork chop. You can't even taste a season on him. <laughs> I know he's seasoned. Yeah, right. But somebody who come in church 30 minutes and want that word and, and go home and apply it, you, you'll start seeing their fruit. You, they'll start budding. How in the world he already budding? Be, because, because they're in position to get the sun and the word and the water and they'll start budding. Because you, faith cometh by hearing. That, that waters you. That, that sustains you. That plants you. And, and if you keep doing it, eventually you'll buy a million dollar church. But you got to be in the right position. My wife, we, we, we just kept saying, we got to position ourselves. We, we got to get up. She told me, baby, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Get up. I, what, what's this? How many, how many uh, 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 numbers do we got? What, what baby? I, I'm, but, but, but all that work together for our good. See, when, you, when you're positioning yourself, you got to have somebody with you to tell you when you are out of position. I, I, don't need, I don't need him to keep telling me. We come, give me, come here for a minute. Now, just start walking around here. Just start walking around this whole thing. Just around here. Come here. Just start walking in a circle. Him and Vontae do anything for me. They're walking in a circle. Now he ain't making no move. He, he ain't doing nothing. My job is to tell him, man, well, you're out of position. You got to get around people that will tell you you out of position. But you know what you do? Start walking around the circle. You start walking with them. You start walking with them. Because you don't even realize you out of position. Because you've been, you've been out of position so long that you can't even, you don't even know you out of position. You've been doing it so long that way that when God is trying to reposition you, now you're getting mad. Am I, am I, am I helping you? Man, well, I was telling me a story one time that they had this dog. What was that dog name? Ginger. And I remember Ginger. And Ginger stayed at their dad's house so long. And, and he stayed in the house. I remember Ginger. And he said, so they took Ginger to the park. And when Ginger got out that truck and looked, Ginger shot back in that truck. Because, because watch this, Ginger wasn't willing to change positions. And that's how Christian people do. We get out of our comfort zone when God really wants, because all you got to do is do something different, somebody will bless you. All you got to do, but that, that's why you struggle to get blessed because you keep doing the same. Tim used this one time, peanut butter and jelly stuff. Sometimes you just got to take the jelly off and put a banana in there. Can I get an amen? But we don't, I don't like this. Baby, if you don't position, if you don't reposition yourself and do something different, you keep doing the same old stuff. You stop at Starbucks, get the same drink. You go to Food Line, eat the same stuff. You get on the same path, the same interstate. Your kids gonna call you. You gonna cry. I'm not helping y'all. 
You got to do something different so you can get blessed. Someone said, I got to reposition myself. I got I to gotta get myself together. We almost done. And so, <laughs> and so there's no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. This is what we think. This is how I think. This, this is what people think. So let me give you the scripture. 1 John 4 and 18. The one who fear is not made in perfect love. This is what we think. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to get saved. I don't want no overseer because I don't want nobody to put me in the right position. Yep, so if I come to, if I come to church a lot, they're going to figure out something. So I got to miss a couple of days. <laughs> so they can't figure me out. But don't you know God has already figured you out and God has already worked it out? Don't you know there's nothing too big for God? Yep, I, I got to leave early because I don't want nobody asking me no questions. I got to, I'm, that's how we think. Because really when it comes to church, but if you get in your comfort zone, I have seen people that don't say nothing. But I looked at some videos They'll turn up because they're in their comfort zone. But you got to be able to turn up for God. Because the more you praise God, the more you lift your hands up, the more you get on your knees, the more you give, it's coming back to you. I'm, 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 this is what I'm learning. I used to get mad when people come to church and don't come back. Now God said, they, they, they'll tear your church up if they join. Baby, can I tell him what Bishop Duke told me? Uh, Bishop Duke told me one thing about the growth. This is true. This is, true. This is for your own life, too. I'm going to help you out. My bishop told me this. He said, churches grow in two ways. He said, they grow in two ways. I said, I need this. He said, they grow when people come, and they grow when people leave. He said, if some folk had left two years ago, I would have already been in my new building. You trying to keep people around you that's stunting your growth. You don't want to reposition. And for real, it don't, it look, it look like it ain't nothing, but they, they poisoning you on the inside. And so they're stunting your growth. And that's why you, when, when you should have done it in one year, it's taking you five years to do it. God, man, can I, am I helping y'all? So I was, I was tired today, so I was going to pick up my mama today, and we would just go chat. So I said, no, nah, baby, I, we got mother, and I'll come pick you up Monday. We'll go eat some, go to Metro Donuts Monday, get some chicken and waffles, right? Yeah, you paying for it. No, I'm just playing, mom. So, <laughs> just kidding. So, <laughs> so, but I knew, I said, well, I got to finish studying. I got to finish studying. Finish, I got I to study. I got to study. Because uh, two things a pastor do. You have to learn two things about a pastor. Never join a church when the pastor don't have a pastor. You got to have some type of accountability. All right? Always, always have some type of accountability. When you're when you, you in charge and can't nobody tell you nothing, you're headed for destruction. All right? So <laughs> I don't, that just came up. I don't even know why that came up. And so, what was I talking about? Position. <laughs> I can't. I can't figure the other one out. <laughs> I, you can't figure the other one out. But yeah. But, 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 but yeah. Yeah. You got. You got to. Um, and oh, I know the other one. And and ne and never give to a church where the pastor don't tithe. Ne never give to a church where the pastor don't tithe. Don't ever do it. You ask them, are you tithing? Who is your pet? No, don't you ask the pastor that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you, the Bible says you'll know them by their what? You ain't got to ask, you'll know them by their fruit. So, uh, uh, many, so what we do, we think, this is how, this is how we think, and I'm going to stop in a minute, is that many, many of us, watch through it, we, we equate godliness with hardship. 
We, we think that if I do God, if I get saved, if I come to church, it's a struggle. You pop out that bed every day and go to work. And you'll get you a nut, you'll get two jobs if you need it. Watch this. This good, Mr. Brown. You'll get two jobs, but you won't do two services. Now, I'd have made one service. I ain't, I ain't nowhere in the world. I can I, no. You're not gonna take all my time on my Sunday. No way. Not not knowing that that thing is building you, it is growing you, it's making you stronger. I'm I'm not strong just because I'm chilling. I'm strong in the Word because I do God. A amen. I'm 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 positive because I do God. I hear God. Guess what? Because he's my best friend. And so we, we equate godliness with hardship. We may fear the future, wondering what we'll have to endure as believers. I ain't joining that church because they, no, they mandate too much. Well, you need, a, you need to get a position. Because once you get God on the inside of you, this for Rachel right here, just for the, all the work you do, it don't even seem like it's hard. Because God will lighten up your work. He'll lighten up the load. If you think it's hard, it's going to be hard. So a man think it. I, I'm preaching. I'm sweaty. I'm going to go home and eat, watch the game. I told my wife we get here early tomorrow. You understand? Because we know we're on a mission for God. We, we, I don't want to miss, I, I want to turn over every rock that God has for us, right? So watch this whole right there, twin. And so God says his, his intention is to bless us and not to hurt us, right? He's continually reminding us of this famous verse. I want you to put this in your spirit. Jeremiah 29 and 1. For I know. Okay, okay. Ooh, let me get my rag. Let me get my rag. So if he said, I know the plans I have for you. So who would you put your trust in? Because he know the plans. You, you got to position. You got, watch this. This is the problem that I have learned from this church. We are scared to let go of the past and embrace the future. This is what I have learned, that we keep holding on to the past, the overtime. The overtime can't do what the new time can do. It can't, it can't do it. I, you you got to, you, old things are passed away. Somebody said, old things, why you keep going in the gutter? Old things are passed away. God is trying to position you for something new. You, you, want, you, want, a, you want a wife, and you keep going to the same 7-Eleven every day. The same 7-Eleven. Because you don't want to try nothing new. You, you want a husband, you keep going to the same Exxon, getting the same gas. Same Exxon. You ain't doing nothing new. See, you got to position yourself. See, because God is a God that don't stand still. God, he's a moving God. He, he's not a standstill God. He, 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 he got to move to the left, the right, the up. He, he's a God of movement. That's, that's why he made water. He called money currency because it moves. And if you stuck, you stuck. Now, somebody's going to come and tell you that joke is crazy. Ain't nobody told you crazy? Oh, you're doing the same thing. You, you, got, to, you, got, you got to what? Position yourself. You, you got to, you got to, you got to, you don't, you don't, watch this. When they pray over there in Egypt, in Israel, there's a certain way they pray and they bow. 
That's what they do. You got to position yourself for the blessings of the Lord. Babe, don't mess with me right now and I'm going in my closet. Babe, don't mess with me right now and I'm going. What I told her this morning, I said, you know what? I only feel like cutting this grass. It's nine degrees out here. I said, but I ain't going to have time if I don't cut it today. I said, let me, let me put on my earbuds and let me go hear God. Let, let, I want to go hear God. I want to go out there and talk to God. Because, because if I didn't have this God in me, if I have this God in me and I listen to the nonsense and the things that people do and say, I would be insane. But I got enough God in me to know that it's working for my good. And you don't have to get rid of your enemies. God will get rid of them. You on the phone trying to text, trying to set folk up, trying to Facebook them and all. Leave them people alone go to God. Because everybody not going to like you anyway. Not going to like you. Last one and we out of here. Watch this. And so Romans 8 and 31 it says, if God be for you, then who could be against you? That's why you have to position. I told my wife, I'm and I shouldn't have said that as the pastor. I, I said, I'm, I'm going to just let people keep doing what they want to do. You let, I, I'm going to let you, because at night I'm going to bed. The best thing I could do is come up here and tell you, get in position. Get in position. Because you get in position, you ain't in position. I got to tell you get in position. Yeah, and one, and one thing, you, somebody said get in position. All right, last thing we out of here. Last thing. All right. Do we believe God? Oh, no, that's not it. I'm so sorry. All right. All right. The last thing, and I'm just going to not I'm just gonna hit this and we'll get out of here. The next thing that can get you out of position is pride. Because God wants you to lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. But pride will uh, uh, get you out of position. Try to say, I don't know. Watch this. For the Bible says, humble yourself, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Therefore, under the high, mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he will exalt you. You don't have to exalt yourself. You don't have to put up a big banner. You don't have to lift up a... All you have to do is get... A, if bishops say, I need you to pray. Because I'm preaching every Sunday and preaching every Wednesday. You should have a bomb sermon. You should be able to pray. You should be at the house praying that when I ask you, you should come in here, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Everybody snot, my God, that joker pray. But if you come in here telling me some boo boo boo, you've been out of position at your house. You've been out of position. N never, never will, will they catch me out of position. If my, my bishop tell me I need you to preach in November, I, I'm going to start studying Monday. Never, never, ne never ever. If, if I'm not teaching early morning in the word as a minister or an elder, guess what I do know? What somebody else teaching the next day. I know somebody, you ain't got to tell me it's my time to teach because I'm going to come in there like it's, it's like my time to teach every Sunday. Okay, somebody drop the ball. Nope, that ain't what it says. These questions says, somebody said, get back in position. Get, now, never I'm going to study today for tomorrow. I've been had this, but it's the proper time because God is telling us now we got to get a position. You got to get a position to receive this blessing. You got to get in and you got to stay in position. I, out of order people, it's hard for them to get their blessing. But if you're in position, every time I call you, Mom, what you doing, baby? I just finished reading John 3.16. So I asked my wife, so, so my music always loud. So my wife is turning up now. She turning that music up louder. Than that. She turning that music up. She in there worshiping. She, so I'm saying, you know what? 
we are actually we actually going to another level in our own house. In our on our own house. So her music up loud, I go in the office and shut the door and turn my up. Then she starts sending scriptures. I ain't sending no scriptures. But I'm just saying, because for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And and let me just help you real quick. I'm I'm, I'm going to help y'all real quick, and I'm going home. This this for y'all. This this for you, Gigi. This this good right here. This, this for you both. Watch this. The more you do God in your house, the more you fill your house with the Holy Ghost, you ain't got to worry about a whole bunch of nonsense coming to your house. You ain't got to put up no beware dog. You ain't got to put up no none of that. Oh. All you got to do is say, this is a house of worship. When you come on my front porch in my corner, it got blessings. That's what it says. Blessings. So when you walk in there, you should feel the Holy Ghost. You, the, the, the enemy shouldn't be comfortable. They should walk in your house. I don't know why I'm scratching, but I got to get out of here. No, baby, when, when you come in there, that should be a, a sense of the presence of God in there. It should smell holy. It should feel holy. When you when you walk in there, that should be the when you come in, you should be in a cloud of God. You you when you when you walk, sometime I walk in there, I say, my God, I, I feel the presence of God in my house. And that's the way it's get in position so everything around you will be in position. Can y'all clap your hands for God? My God. So we have a lot going on. We're going to get ready to get out of here. God is truly blessing us. We are a church of order. I don't know what's going on. I told my wife, I don't know what God is doing. I don't know what he's doing, but I know he's doing something at Prince of Peace, and we're so blessed, and we're, we're so honored. I'm, I'm so honored to be the pastor um, of this church. I wouldn't want a pastor um, nowhere else. Um, God is truly an amazing God. So tomorrow is our, is our, giving, our giving tomorrow. It's supposed to rain in the morning, but at least by 9 o'clock, I think it's supposed to have stopped raining. And so we're going to be here. We're going to be in full effect. We're going we're gonna, to, matter of fact, I'm going to go pick up two more tables tomorrow so we don't have to lift up those heavy tables. We're coming in, having everything set up, and feeding. And at the end, <clears throat> whatever we have left, we are going to get. All right? We, we have multiple. I mean, God is truly blessing us. So we're actually, we're actually looking for a church van now. We, we, that's, we, we, we're looking for a church van. Something, n not nothing big. I told my wife, if we do ten more thousand dollars, we're going to get that van. I tell you that. You have not because your ass not. Amen. And so we're going to actually go get this church van. God is truly blessing us. And so we have a lot to get ready to go on. Um, this week we just have uh, um, Thursday. Um, spaghetti Thursday. I'm, go, I'm going to eat with my man back there, Brush Sean. We're going to eat too. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to eat with Sean. Somebody said, You act right, I'll take you out to eat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, y'all, you can say, say that one more time. Go ahead and say that again. Now, we got to talk business. I just want to throw that out there. Let them know we're going to eat. All right. So, God is truly an amazing God. We're doing a lot. So, Sunday is Mother's Day. We have, come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. If you don't want to support your mama, support me. Fathers, they don't matter. I'm here. So we're going to make sure we bless our, my, my wife. Um, I can even say our mother because she out at my mama sometimes. So, But that's good. That's good. We'll bless my Got my mama here, so we're going to bless her Mother's Day. But we have something for every mother that comes through these doors Sunday. You know how we do. We bless you. We, we're blessing church. We're blessing. So Mother's Day, we're not even going to be long. We're getting out. Let me just tell you my plans. So sorry that I'm hanging out with my boo. Baddest chicken tail. Yeah, that's my boo right there. But I act like you know. Me and my boo, we eating crab legs, shrimp. We doing a whole nine yards. Right around. Do I need a salve? Keep going. I'm going to put them on the grill. Amen. Yeah, we're going to hang out. Then Sunday, me and my wife, we're going to the movies. And we're going to cheer. Yeah, that's right. That's what she wants. 
But she hit me in the head, my God. My, I told her, you go and pay. No, you can pay for everything. I said, well, go get the crab legs. No, you going with me to get the crab legs. And I said, my God, all right, let's hang out. So, you know, just, um, just be a blessing to somebody. Go on, just go have a good day. Go have a good Come out here tomorrow and feed them with joy, happiness. Amen. Amen. Come out here and do your thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get four box cutters and a thing. So everybody had a box cutters tomorrow. Um, we already know what we're doing. Put the meats. We already know what we're doing. Come out here and be a blessing to 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 who we can. All right. We we love to bless people. I have people contacting me all the time about how we're doing it and when we're doing it. Um, can we get in it? So I had a couple of churches try to go do it. They're like four and five behind us or, or somebody else. So we we got blessed to do it. All right. We're gonna get ready to give. It's eight ten. We getting out of here. Put my giving back up there, please. So we can give Cash App, Square, or you can come up here and put them in if you need an envelope. Raise your hand. Um, give your tithes. Um, we, we've been blessed. We are a blessing. We are a blessing. You've been a blessing. All right, face, Facebook, we out of here. Go ahead and cut us off. We out of here. Is that a leak? See you back there today. I'm glad to see you back there. Got Laura. Amen. That's right. <laughs>